More than $60 billion have been invested into data centers across the world in some blockbuster M&As that have reshaped the market completely. To paint a clearer picture of the market today, I'm speaking to Carlos Katsuya, Chief Investment Officer and Head of TMT for Asia, Europe and MENA at the IFC. Carlos, thanks a lot for talking to Frontline. Um, what sort of investments can make a data center a good target for investment from, uh, from an investor? All right, well, first of all, uh, a little bit of a disclosure. I have seen invest only in emerging markets. Mm. Okay. So many of those transactions that you just described uh, were immature. in mature yeah. developed markets that have a completely different uh, dynamic and business model when compared to emerging mm. markets. So from IFC's perspective, mm -hmm. when we look at emerging markets, we look at uh, data centers in emerging markets, there are pretty much three models that we look into, right? Three possible uh, models. Uh, in some cases, you're talking about greenfield uh, projects. In, uh, sometimes you're talking about strategics, right? The global data center companies that are moving into emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And the third model that is becoming more and more common are the kind of uh, medium to smaller size data centers, oftentimes local data centers okay. that are backed by PE firms, right? And uh, oftentimes those, uh, those are the data centers that are eventually sold to the strategics once they decide to move into those markets. Mm -hmm. From an investor's perspective, the way that we look into this is that it's, uh, we try to be more strategic than opportunistic, mm -hmm. uh, an institution like IFC, I mean. So in that sense, uh, we look into providing debt and equity investment. We're talking about uh, greenfield companies or those backed by strategics. We usually look at it uh, as more of an equity opportunity because we believe that there is a bit of a chicken and the egg situation. Those data centers usually have difficulty in attracting the initial capital that is necessary for them to start construction yeah. because they don't have a, a sale a contract signed yet. And they can't usually find uh, clients until they, they are able to show some construction. Okay. So in that sense, we can play a role of a facilitator. We can actually make happen those investments. So right? give them some trust. Yes, we take yeah. the construction risk, mm. right? Which is something that not many investors are willing to take. The interesting <clears> thing <throat> is that this is something that we've done in the past, right? And many of our investments where we did take that construction risk, they were eventually sold to the strategics. Okay. And of course, it takes some time, so we, we, so we took not only the construction risk, but also some of the commercial risk mm -hmm. until that data center was filled, right? But eventually what we learned, what we saw, is that those projects actually paid off. The return that we got on those data centers once they were sold, right, was very decent, even okay. for emerging markets uh, standards. Mm, okay, and what sort of things are you seeing in the background now? Uh, they could build up, for example, on what you just described. Uh, and do you have any investors interested? Have they changed their minds a little bit? Oh, well, data centers in Asia is a very hot topic. Mm. Okay. There, are, uh, uh, there is a lot of interest, there are a lot of uh, uh, investors at different stages coming into the market. Uh, let's not forget that it, this is a market that mm -hmm. until very recently, um, any international investor focused only on Japan, uh, Australia, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Okay. There are some uh, international investors that are finally uh, showing some appetite to, oh, let's say, take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and go into markets like Indonesia. Okay. Right? Uh, some have already gone into places like India or even China. Uh, but for some of the other smaller markets, it's something that is starting to happen, hmm. right? <clears throat> so I think this is a common trend uh, that we are seeing across the globe, and it's actually finally happening here in Asia, hmm. right? And uh, the amounts involved are significant, and we are seeing especially... By, uh, so, so by significant, you mean hundreds of millions or billions? <coughs> You're talking about... It's more about uh, on the on the multiple side and on the mm. uh, size of the uh, oh, facilities. facilities. Okay. Right? Uh, 
we are starting to see quite a few uh, transactions that would involve data centers uh, larger than 30 megawatts. Okay. Okay. So, so for for this uh, for this region, we're talking especially for developing Asia. Those are sizable uh, mm. projects. And uh, as I was saying, uh, some of those data centers, especially those backed by uh, funds. We're talking about some large, deep-pocketed names mm. uh, behind those projects. So you have people like uh, TPG, Bain, right? They are coming into Driving. coming to the market, mm. right? Uh, from an institution like like IFC's perspective, mm. that is, we see that <coughs> we welcome that kind of mm. uh, of movement because we are firmly convinced that infrastructure sharing, which includes data centers, right, is an important enabler for the whole connectivity uh, ecosystem. And second, if we are to invest in any of those projects, we want to be, uh, we want to do it with, uh, we like to do it with financial investors mm. whose interests are aligned to ours. Mm. To, uh, to, uh, and. Uh, these are projects that we feel very comfortable uh, uh, in uh, supporting. Okay. And then at the beginning, when you mentioned the smaller data centers actually doing quite well, um, are you talking about sort of edge data centers, more on the edge side of things, or just smaller facilities? Normally? More, more smaller facilities. Okay. Smaller facilities. Mm. And uh, uh, many of them actually took a while to... To build up. Not, not so much to build up, mm. but to, to fill it. Okay. Right? So... For example, Indonesia, mm. right? I've been uh, in, in Asia for almost seven years. Mm. For the last, I would say, five, six years, Indonesia has been the next big thing, okay. right, to happen, right? We, data centers in Indonesia, like every time you go to, Indo I, I, I went to Indonesia, it's like, oh, no, it is about to explode. And it didn't, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, in the last, 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. uh, at least a couple of those data centers that were kind of in that limbo, mm -hmm. right, they really took off. Mm -hmm. right? So we are really starting to see that movement to happen, that promise to finally materialize. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same way that it's happened in Indonesia, it will probably happen in many other markets. So the potential, right, uh, is finally starting to to, to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Indonesia, there were some regulatory changes mm -hmm. that also propelled this, wasn't there? Yes. Uh, as of uh, mid-2017, okay. the regulation that required uh, uh, the data to be held onshore, yeah. right, uh, became effective. Mm. Uh, that had been known already for a while, right? But uh, I think many players didn't take it very seriously. Okay. Uh, quite a few of them actually told us that they didn't believe that it would be enforceable, right? That the government would not be willing to enforce uh, that regulation. I think what happened was a combination of maybe the government being more effective than, than they thought. Okay. But also, combined to the fact that uh, data traffic in Indonesia has grown so much, right, mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of the, the players mm -hmm. have decided to uh, bet mm -hmm. on the capabilities of data centers built onshore. Okay. And we've seen some of those regulatory changes as well, especially in China, um, with the policy that they need to stay within China, mainland China. Uh, do you expect it to see in more countries around Asia and then consequently build up this, this data center demand? Yes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I believe there will be, uh, let's say, more data centers being built across Asia. I'm not so sure the kind of uh, role that regulations requiring data, uh, data to be held okay. uh, onshore, how much... Uh, how, um, what would be the impact of, uh, of those regulations on, uh, on having those data centers built. In theory, 
it is uh, it is positive okay but as in the case of Indonesia uh, many of the countries across the region uh, have an issue of uh, not being able to enforce okay. that kind of uh, regulation okay Carlos, well, sounds good uh, thanks a lot for talking to me uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.